Making the headlines this evening, Anambra State Government empowers female farmers. Citizens warned against money politics. 15 APC Senators start seven APC House of Representative members defect to PDP and other political parties. And on the foreign scene, nearly 50 people died in wildfires in Attica region of Athens. You're welcome to ABS TV News. My name is Chidima Orangwa. 10 female Ifad Value Chain Development Program VCDP farmers have been empowered with a can gas, a studer, cylinder machine, and 50 kg bag of vitamin A cassava flour each after their capacity building training at International Institute for Tropical Agriculture, IITA Ibado. The training was on the use of vitamin A cassava root to produce different recipes captioned Business Opportunity in Vitamin A Cassava for Improved Nutrition and Livelihood. Agri correspondent Abeleze brings you details. Presenting the startup park equipment to the beneficiaries at the Agricultural Development Program Office in Oka, the state program coordinator of the Anambra State Value Chain Development Program, Mr. Namda Wuncha, restated the state government's commitment towards ensuring advanced capacity building for the state farmers. Mr. Wuncha disclosed that the trainees will further be trained on the production of the cassava flour for the different recipes as well as collaborate with the Ministry of Education for the supply of the nutritious products products to students on pupils to achieve the aims and objectives of the school's feeding program of the federal government. He further said the program would train even more in other aspects of agribusinesses to complement the state's government efforts in job creation to eradicate poverty. Mr. Wuncha enjoined the trainees to ensure they step down the knowledge in their respective communities. I will be also an advocate. I will champion it. Let us introduce it to schools in partnership with the ministry and one one value chain we invite all the schools to demonstrate here yeah, please have a stand where we sell our anambra whatever you call it so that children will go there and buy it in a vote of thanks one of the beneficiaries mrs philomena kemeze commended the state government and ifad vcdp for such wealth creation venture and the support given to them by providing them with some equipment to start up assuring the judicious use of the equipment we are so grateful sir, concerning the skills we went to ibadan to acquire so we don't know how to express our joy towards the thing we've done to us and our promise is that from today henceforth, with the skills we acquired, we are going to step down to our communities, our fellow women in our area, and we are going to see that all those things we learned, we are going to impact it in them. The capacity building, which had a total of 30 trainees, with 10 each selected from the three out of the six VCDP states, was sponsored by IFAD VCDP and conducted by Harvest Plus at the International Institute for Tropical Agriculture, IITA Ibadan. High point of the event was presentation of the empowerment equipment to the beneficiaries by the state program coordinator of the Anambra State Value Chain Development Program, IFAD VCDP, Mr. Namde Awuncha. From the Agricultural Development Program Office in Oka, I am Ebele Eze, reporting for ABS News. Our former permanent secretary in Ministry of Information, Chief Deacon Deloy, has commanded Governor Willie Obiano for placing the welfare of civil servants as priority in his government. He gave the commendation in an ABS television phone in program, Good Morning, Anambra, on the topic strengthening the public service. Correspondent Olwe Bubude has the detail. Chief Dike, who featured as a guest on the program, commended the governor as there has not been any form of labor agitating from civil servants in the state since his administration. Rather, he noted there have been various forms of motivational packages, including increase in salaries. Chief Dike further urged the government to build more effective communication links between the masses and government to gain first-hand feedback on government policies. He said that during the existence of postal service, people who wrote to the government officials and expect a reply which we are never denied them well the obiata administration is unique 
Why I say this is unique is because we need to ask ourselves, how many state governors have vision and mission? You see, formally, when the minister comes up with a policy which the civil service helps him to formulate, the civil servant has a religious conviction and belief that this policy must be actualized. Even if he doesn't like it, he has no other choice than to implement that. Now, vis-a-vis -vis the incumbent or the present dispensation in the state, he has not only vision and mission, but he has made it crystal clear by training and retraining. Now, the man is a typical example of leadership. And you can see that the civil servants who are lucky to be in the service now and still running are, by any standard, the best amongst civil servants in other states, apart from those in the federal service. Contributing the senior special assistant to the governor on secondary education, Dr. Paul Ifani, who also featured on the program, urged parents to engage their children to learn new skills during the long vacation. Dr. Ifani emphasized that children should be encouraged in many other ways, apart from academics, as they can be engaged in learning various vocational skills. Retreating that children should not always be saddled with much academic work, but be given enough time to rest as against the practice of budging children with holiday lessons. He also urged parents, schools, churches, and government to go back to the basics in modeling children's lives to be good ambassadors of the society. And for me, holiday is a time for me to catch up. Those subjects that are very challenging, that's the time you read. That if you're going to a new class, that's the time. I remember in our own time, we get books. We're going to class uh, three or four. You get books and read. Okay, apart from academics, you can engage them. Say, for instance, you, you, you father, your father is a trader or a farmer. You can see the person. Something happened interestingly. I have a problem in my house with power. And uh, my friend, gave, somebody gave me a name. A guy came fix it. Hmm. Guess what? He's a student. I said, how do you learn it? He said, my father is a electrician. So he works with the father. So during this time, I encourage parents, let the, let the kids see what you're doing. You can go out with them. You know, just like he said, apart from the study, you can engage them that above all, they should not, it's, it's dangerous not for them not to read for the entire two months. But don't overlabor that. Engage them in other things, you know. That is really the time you stay with them. You discover that once a, a kid starts school, you, you don't have enough time to spend with him or her. But in Oka, I am all over with the ABS News. A philanthropist from our in Orumba North local government area, Chief Israel Ezwe and wife Mrs. Ogochiku, has donated a wheelchair to a disabled person. The wheelchair was presented to the disabled by Mrs. Njideka Moneke during an ABS radio audience participatory program, Cafe Half Hour, in Oka. Correspondent Ogochiku Keke is our guide. Came to the ABS, Mrs. Mokeme, who presented the item to the beneficiary on behalf of the benefactor, Chief Israel Ezwe, explained how she discussed the condition of the disabled person with the benefactor, said that after the discussion, Chief Ezwe, who is the traditional Prime Minister of Awa, had compassion and empathy for the victim. She commended the wife of the governor, Chief Mrs. Ebele Chukwobiano, for putting smiles on people's faces by building houses for the homeless, among others, through cafe. <laughs> Deka Munye Governor Chief Mrs. Sebele Chukwobiano, Oji Atomato Cafe, Wene Nyelende Madaka, Efuna, Wichi Egolo, Wono Golie, Na Kwae Wego, No No Jego Chala Chala, Mente, Kogolo, Kowe Last Year, Mwoye Kanjwena Ase, Ndiye, Iye Nyo Madifi, Nyo Madesi Wife. On our part, the presenter of the program, Mrs. Ifama Akife, appreciated Chief Ezra for supporting CAFE to ensure that disabled persons are recognized in the state and encouraged other well-to-do citizens to borrow a leave from him. Receiving the item, the beneficiary, Ms. Ifnaya Wampo, commended Chief Ezwe and the wife for the kind gesture and expressed happiness for the intervention which she said we aid her mobility. One master, 
Narrating her ordeal, a sister to the beneficiary, Miss Mesoma Wampo, said that she has been in the condition for years, saying that she was the only person taking care of the disabled sister and prayed for God's blessing on the philanthropist. <laughs> Agatha Diocese of the Anglican Communion has warned against the use of money to induce the electorate during elections in the country. In a communique issued at the end of the first session of the Fifth Synod at the Cathedral Church of St. John's Equilobia in Agatha local government area, the diocese described the use of money to woo voters during elections as counterproductive as it will make eligible voters not to vote according to their conscience in enthroning a credible leadership. This report is taken from our studio. The communique urged Christians to take full ownership of the nation's electoral processes by obtaining their permanent voter cards in order to exercise their franchise during the 2019 general elections and subsequent ones in the country. It urged those occupying elective positions to desist from taking the electorate for granted reminded them of the need to place priority on the welfare of the citizenry. The communique condemned the incessant killings of innocent citizens across the country by the suspected Fulani cattle herdsmen and called on the federal government to be more proactive in tackling the menace, which it noted is threatening the peace and corporate existence of the Nigerian nation. It stressed the need for more employment opportunities to be created for the teeming youth populace in order to divert their mind from crime and restiveness. The Synod, which has its theme as Jesus Christ the Foundation and the Chief Cornerstone, called for improved power supply in the country for enhanced business transactions. It called on Nigerians to resort to prayers for God's intervention in the myriads of challenges facing the country, especially insecurity, poverty, and hunger. The communique, which was jointly signed by the President of the Synod and Bishop of Aguata Diocese, Right Reverend Samuel Ezofo, and the outgoing clerical Synod Secretary, Venerable Steve Nadi, commended Governor Willobiano of Anambra State for his interventions in virtually all sectors of the state economy, especially in agriculture, which it noted will ensure food security and called on others to emulate him. The Synod finally called for more World Bank interventions in the pockets of erosion, ravaging different parts of Anambra State to save lives and property. The Senate today adjourned plenary till after its long vacation. The lawmakers will resume seating on September 25, 2018. This came after about 15 senators today defected from the All Progressives Congress, APC, to the People's Democratic Party, PDP. The defecting senators include Senator Dina Milaye, former governor of Kano, Rabiu Kwankwaso, Banabas Gemade Benu, Shaaba Laf Lafia Jiwara, Refu Ibrahim Kwara, Abdulaziz Nyako Adamawa, Mansurad Sumonu Oyo, and Usman Nafada Gumbe. Others are Senator Suleiman Hunkui, Ibrahim Dambaba, Obale Situ, Isa Mesiu, Suleiman Nazif, Soji Akimbi. There will be a my drama. Earlier in the day, when the residencies of Senate President Bukol Saraki and the Deputy Senate President Ike Kwaramado were stunned by security operatives in Abuja. The Senate President's convoy was reportedly blocked by security operatives while he was about leaving his residence. After the incident, Dr. Saraki arrived at the Senate chamber at 10.40 a.m. to preside over plenary. Although it is not clear how he arrived at the chamber despite the police blocking his residence. Similarly, in a certain twist of fate, 32 members of the ruling All Progressive Congress in the House of Representatives also today defected to the opposition People's Democratic Party. Four other lawmakers defected to the African Democratic Congress. The Speaker, Mr. Yakub Dogara, who made the announcement threw the PDP camp into jubilation. Report says nearly 50 people have died in wildfires burning in the Attica region around Athens in Greece's worst fire crisis in more than a decade. 
According to the report, 26 bodies were found in a yard in the seaside village of Mati, which is at the center of the disaster. The fire brigade confirmed an overall death toll of 49, but many of the dead believed to be young children. Many calls have been made to rescue services looking for missing persons. As part of a huge rescue effort, emergency workers use boats and helicopters to evacuate a beach while a search and rescue operation is being conducted for 10 tourists who fled one of the fire in a boat. Hundreds of firefighters are battling the blazes and the authorities are seeking international assistance. Prime Minister Alexis, Alexis Tripas assured that they will do whatever that is humanly possible to control it. And just before we go, a quick reminder that you can follow news and programs from any parts of the world by logging onto our website, www.absradiotv.com. Like us on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash ABS Radio Television and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ABS Radio TV. And now the recap of our major stories. A number of state government empowers female farmers with state's commitment towards ensuring advanced capacity building for farmers. Citizens warned against many politics. 15 APC senators, 37 APC House of Representative members defect to PDP and other political parties. And on the foreign scene reported that nearly 50 people die in wildfires in the Arctic region of Athens, described as Greece's worst fire crisis in a decade. And that's the size of our package tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Chidima Arangwa. Good night. <laughs>